National Electrical Code Section 424.3b permits up to three fixed electric space heaters operating at 240 volts, 120 volts, or 120 slash 240 volts to be powered by a single branch circuit. The circuit's rating must be at least 125% of the total amperage of the heaters. Now, let's consider a scenario where the total amperage of the heaters is 12.75 amps. To determine the required circuit rating, multiply the total amperage by 125%. 12.75 amps times 125% equals 15.9375 amps, which rounds up to 16 amps. Therefore, a 20 amp circuit exceeds the required 16 amps and is acceptable for powering the three baseboard heaters. It's crucial to use a circuit breaker rated for 20 amps. Also, install the heaters on a dedicated circuit that does not supply power to other appliances or lighting. Ensure that the wiring and connections throughout the circuit are properly installed. Lastly, adhere to all local building codes and obtain the necessary permits for electrical work. If the total amperage of the heaters exceeds 16 amps, it will be necessary to use multiple circuits or upgrade the circuit to a higher amperage to accommodate the load safely and in compliance with the electrical codes. The National Electrical Code, or NEC, provides comprehensive guidelines for electrical installations to ensure safety and prevent hazards. Article 424 specifically addresses the requirements for fixed electric space heating equipment. Understanding and adhering to these regulations is crucial for anyone installing or modifying electrical heating systems. The NEC specifies that the branch circuit supplying fixed electric space heaters must have an ampacity rating not less than 125% of the total calculated load of the heaters. This requirement accounts for the continuous nature of space heater operation and prevents overloading the circuit. When determining the appropriate circuit size, it is essential to calculate the total amperage of all heaters connected to the circuit. This is done by summing the amperage ratings of each individual heater, as indicated on their nameplates or product specifications. Once the total amperage is known, multiply it by 1.25 to determine the minimum required ampacity of the branch circuit. For example, if three heaters each draw 5 amps, the total amperage is 15 amps. Multiplying 15 amps by 1.25 yields a minimum required circuit ampacity of 18.75 amps. In this case, a 20 amp circuit would be the appropriate choice, as it exceeds the minimum requirement. It is important to select a circuit breaker that matches the ampacity of the branch circuit. The circuit breaker serves as a protective device, interrupting the circuit in the event of an overload or short circuit. Using a circuit breaker with a higher ampacity than the circuit is designed for can create a safety hazard, as it may not trip in time to prevent damage or fire. The NEC also addresses the type of wiring required for space heater circuits. The conductors used must be rated for the voltage and amperage of the circuit, and they must be installed in accordance with the code's requirements for conductor sizing, insulation, and protection. In general, non-metallic sheets cable, or NM cable, is commonly used for residential wiring, but other wiring methods such as conduit may be required in certain situations. When making connections to the heaters and the circuit breaker, it is essential to use proper wiring techniques and ensure that all connections are tight and secure. Loose or corroded connections can create resistance, leading to overheating and potential fire hazards. It is also important to properly ground the heaters and the circuit to provide a path for fault current in the event of an electrical problem. In addition to the NEC requirements, local building codes may impose additional regulations on electrical installations. These codes may vary depending on the location and may address specific aspects of space heater installations such as the placement of heaters, the type of wiring allowed, and the requirements for inspections. It is always advisable to consult with a qualified electrician and obtain the necessary permits before undertaking any electrical work to ensure compliance with all applicable codes and regulations. Installing space heaters on a dedicated circuit is highly recommended to prevent overloading the circuit and to minimize the risk of electrical problems. A dedicated circuit is one that serves only the space heaters and does not supply power to other appliances or lighting.
This ensures that the heaters have sufficient power and that the circuit is not subjected to excessive loads. If multiple space heaters are installed in a single room, it may be necessary to use multiple circuits to accommodate the total load. In such cases, it is important to distribute the heaters evenly across the circuits to prevent overloading any one circuit. The NEC also addresses the use of thermostats for controlling space heaters. Thermostats are used to regulate the temperature in a room by automatically turning the heaters on and off as needed. The NEC requires that thermostats used with electric space heaters be listed for that purpose and that they be installed in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. It is important to select a thermostat that is compatible with the type of heater being used and that has the appropriate voltage and amperage ratings. When installing a thermostat, it is essential to follow the manufacturer's instructions carefully and to ensure that all connections are tight and secure. Improperly installed thermostats can create a safety hazard and may not function properly. In addition to the electrical requirements, there are also safety considerations to keep in mind when installing and using space heaters. Space heaters should be placed on a stable, level surface and should be kept away from flammable materials such as curtains, furniture, and bedding. Heaters should never be left unattended and they should be turned off when leaving the room or going to bed. It is also important to regularly inspect space heaters for damage and to have them serviced by a qualified technician if necessary. Damaged heaters can pose a fire hazard and should not be used until they have been repaired. By following these electrical code requirements and safety precautions, it is possible to safely and effectively install a new space heaters in a home or other building. Remember to consult with a qualified electrician and obtain the necessary permits before undertaking any electrical work. To summarize, firstly, determine the total amperage of the heaters by summing the amperage ratings of each individual heater. Secondly, calculate the minimum required circuit capacity by multiplying the total amperage by 1.25. Thirdly, select a circuit breaker that matches the ampacity of the branch circuit. Fourthly, use conductors that are rated for the voltage and amperage of the circuit. Fifthly, ensure that all connections are tight and secure. Sixthly, properly ground the heaters and the circuit. Seventhly, consult with a qualified electrician and obtain the necessary permits. Eighthly, install the heaters on a dedicated circuit. Ninthly, use a thermostat that is listed for use with electric space heaters. Tenthly, keep space heaters away from flammable materials and never leave them unattended. The National Electrical Code provides specific guidelines for installing and wiring electrical appliances, including baseboard heaters. Understanding these requirements is essential to ensure a safe and compliant installation. Firstly, determine the total load of the baseboard heaters. This involves adding up the wattage of each heater to find the total wattage. The product specification sheet should provide the wattage for each heater. Secondly, convert the total wattage to amperage. Use the formula amperage equals wattage divided by voltage. Since the heaters are 240 volts, divide the total wattage by 240 to find the total amperage. Thirdly, calculate the required circuit amperage. The NEC requires that the circuit be rated for at least 125% of the continuous load. Multiply the total amperage by 1.25 to determine the minimum required circuit amperage. Fourthly, select the appropriate circuit breaker. Choose a circuit breaker with an amperage rating that is equal to or slightly higher than the required circuit amperage. Common circuit breaker sizes for 240 volt circuits are 15 amps, 20 amps, and 30 amps. Fifthly, choose the correct wire size. The wire size must be adequate to carry the amperage of the circuit without overheating. The NEC provides tables that specify the minimum wire size for various amperage ratings. Consult the NEC Table 310.15B16 to determine the appropriate wire size for the circuit amperage and conductor type. Sixthly, install a dedicated circuit for the baseboard heaters. It is generally recommended to install baseboard heaters on a dedicated circuit to prevent overloading the circuit and to ensure that the heaters will receive adequate power. A dedicated circuit should not serve any other appliances or lighting. Seventhly, use a two-pole circuit breaker. 
Since the baseboard heaters are 240 volts, a two-pole circuit breaker is required. A two-pole circuit breaker provides overcurrent protection for both legs of the 240 volt circuit. Eighthly, properly ground the circuit. Grounding is essential for safety and helps to prevent electrical shock. Connect the ground wire to the grounding terminal in the circuit breaker panel and to the grounding terminal on each baseboard heater. Ninthly, follow all local building codes. Local building codes may have additional requirements for electrical installations. Be sure to comply with all applicable codes and regulations. Tenthly, obtain the necessary permits and inspections. In many jurisdictions, a permit is required for electrical work. Obtain the necessary permits and schedule an inspection to ensure that the installation meets all applicable codes and regulations. Some additional considerations include, firstly, the length of the circuit. The longer the circuit, the greater the voltage drop. If the voltage drop is excessive, it may be necessary to increase the wire size to compensate. Secondly, the ambient temperature. The ambient temperature can affect the opacity of the wire. If the ambient temperature is high, it may be necessary to direct the wire opacity. Thirdly, the type of insulation. The type of insulation on the wire can also affect its opacity. Consult the NEC tables for the opacity of different types of insulation. Fourthly, the number of conductors in a raceway or cable. If multiple conductors are installed in a raceway or cable, it may be necessary to derive the opacity of the conductors. Fifthly, the presence of other loads in the circuit. If there are other loads on the circuit, such as lighting or appliances, the circuit breaker may need to be sized accordingly. When connecting three baseboard heaters to a single 20 amp two pole circuit, Several factors need consideration to ensure safety and compliance with electrical codes. Firstly, calculate the total amperage. Add the amperage of each heater to find the total load in the circuit. Secondly, verify NEC compliance. The National Electrical Code, or NEC, dictates that the circuit's rating must be at least 125% of the total heater amperage. Thirdly, check wire gauge suitability. Ensure the wire gauge is appropriate for the 20 amp circuit. Typically, 12 American wire gauge or AUG copper wire is used for 20 amp circuits, but always consult local codes and regulations. Fourthly, use a dedicated circuit. Ideally, the baseboard heaters should be on a dedicated circuit with no other appliances or light sharing the load. Fifthly, install a two pole circuit breaker. Since the heaters are 240 volts, a two-pole circuit breaker is essential for safety and proper operation. Sixthly, ensure proper grounding. Grounding is crucial for safety and to prevent electrical shocks. Connect the ground wire to the grounding terminal in the circuit breaker panel and to the grounding terminal on each heater. Seventhly, consider voltage drop. Long wire runs can lead to voltage drop, which can affect the performance of the heaters. Calculate the voltage drop to ensure it's within acceptable limits. Eighthly, adhere to local codes and permits. Always follow local building and electrical codes and obtain the necessary permits for the installation. Ninthly, inspect connections. Ensure all wire connections are tight and secure to prevent overheating and potential fire hazards. Tenthly, test the installation. After installation, test the circuit and heaters to ensure they are functioning correctly and safely. The total amperage of the heaters should not exceed 80% of the circuit breaker's rating. This is to prevent the circuit breaker from tripping due to continuous use. If the total amperage is too close to the circuit breaker's rating, it's better to use multiple circuits or larger circuit breaker with appropriate wiring. When selecting wire, ensure it is rated for the voltage and amperage of the circuit. The wire must also be suitable for the insulation environment. For example, if the wiring is exposed to moisture, use moisture-resistant wire. All wire connections should be made inside approved electrical boxes. Use wire connectors that are appropriate for the wire size and type. The electrical boxes should be securely mounted to the wall or floor. When installing the circuit breaker, follow the manufacturer's instructions and ensure it is properly seated in the circuit breaker panel. The circuit breaker panel should be properly grounded. 
After the installation is complete, test the circuit breaker to ensure it trips properly in the event of an overload. Use a circuit tester to verify that the circuit is properly wired and grounded. It is always best to consult with a qualified electrician to ensure that the installation is safe and compliant with all applicable codes. If you are not comfortable working with electricity, hire a qualified electrician to do the work. Electricity can be dangerous and it is important to take all necessary precautions to prevent electrical shock and fire. The NEC provides detailed requirements for electrical installations and it is important to be familiar with these requirements before undertaking any electrical work. The NEC is updated every three years so it is important to use the most current edition of the code. Local building codes may also have additional requirements, so it is important to check with the local building department before starting any electrical work. In addition to the NEC and local building codes, there are also industry standards that provide guidance on electrical installations. These standards are developed by organizations such as the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, or IE, and the National Fire Protection Association, or NFBA. Following these standards can help to ensure that the installation is safe and reliable. Electrical work should only be performed by qualified individuals who have the necessary training and experience. If you are not qualified to do electrical work, hire a qualified electrician to do the work. Electrical work can be dangerous and it is important to take all necessary precautions to prevent electrical shock and fire. The NEC provides specific requirements for the overcurrent protection of electrical circuits. Overcurrent protection is provided by circuit breakers and fuses. Circuit breakers and fuses are designed to trip or blow when the current in a circuit exceeds a certain level. This protects the wiring and equipment from damage caused by overloads and short circuits. The NEC requires that circuit breakers and fuses be sized according to the opacity of the conductors they protect. The ampacity of a conductor is the maximum current that the conductor can carry safely without overheating. The NEC provides tables that specify the ampacity of different types of conductors. The NEC also requires that circuit breakers and fuses be readily accessible. This means that they must be located in a place where they can be easily reached in the event of an emergency. The NEC provides specific requirements for the grounding of electrical systems. Grounding is the process of connecting the electrical system to the earth. Grounding helps to protect people from electrical shock by providing a path for fault current to flow back to the source. The NEC requires that all electrical equipment be grounded. This includes appliances, lighting fixtures and electrical panels. The NEC also requires that the grounding system be properly installed and maintained. The NEC provides specific requirements for the wiring of electrical systems. The wiring must be of the correct size and type for the application. The wiring must also be properly installed and protected from damage. The NEC requires that all wiring be installed in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. The NEC provides specific requirements for the installation of electrical equipment. The electrical equipment must be installed in a safe and workmanlike manner. The electrical equipment must also be properly grounded. The NEC requires that all electrical equipment be installed in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. The NEC provides specific requirements for the inspection of electrical systems. The electrical system must be inspected by a qualified inspector to ensure that it is safe and compliant with the NEC. The NEC requires that all electrical systems be inspected before they are put into service. The NEC is a complex and comprehensive code. It is important to be familiar with the NEC before undertaking any electrical work. If you are not familiar with the NEC, hire a qualified electrician to do the work. The electricity can be dangerous and it is important to take all necessary precautions to prevent electrical shock and fire.